Hi, I'm Gary Bowden and welcome to Summer and another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month I'm going to show you something really special. I'm going to show you how to draw a 3D cube in perspective and it's going to have transparency and we're also going to use the extrude tool to create a reference object for this. So what I want you to do now is to get on your 3D head and let's go have some fun. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system and get ready to use it in Zara. Now this is a glamour picture of uh, the cube that you're going to create. Now in this tutorial we need to use the extrude tool to create a reference model and this is the way not to do it. So don't do it this way. First of all we'd like this to be 375 by 375 pixels so you um, so so far we're doing things right okay and uh, what I want to do is uh, create a light color for this. Now what we are always prone to doing with the extrude tool is to uh, simply take the tool and drag on the face of the object and bingo we got an extrude and uh, as you can see we're moving this side and that looks like a pretty good cube except you can only rotate it manually from the face and you're never going to get a good pose so let's try this again and we're going to be using the values on the info bar you click on the 3d toggle on toggle off button that is a 3d object now you can't really see it because it's facing forward and that is good. Now the first thing we want to do, and you're again you're not going to notice any difference yet, but let's make the extrude 98 and use the slider. Now let's go to angle 1, which corresponds not to x, y, and z axes, but just follow along, negative 49. Angle 2, let's choose and uh, let's make this about 39 on the slider. We'll choose angle 3 and we're going to make this about 10. Now this looks good and we're going to play with this as a cube. First of all let's try some perspective on this to uh, get it looking a little more dramatic and for perspective let's crank this up to uh, 56 or so. The only thing left to do now is to take the selection tool and rotate this about seven and a half degrees. Now watch this. If we enter this value and then hit enter, that is a better looking model. And what we're going to use is this cube as a reference. And you can right click and lock this if you like. Now the hardest part of creating this glass cube is deciding where the back faces are because they're hidden. So the first thing you do with the drawing tool of your choice is you drop a line from that center corner down and I'm going to make this uh, red and a little more visible for both me and you. Now your second logical point is going to be the corner in front. And I'm going to adjust that second point and go back. And that looks pretty good. And again, that back side is in perspective. Now I want to be able to see that. So I'm going to remove the fill and uh, give it an outline. Now once you've solved that back facing cube it's rather easy to do the other two now we start at the corner and uh, we click down to the other corner that third corner is going to be clicked to meet the first back side you created then we close it now this is a no-brainer to do the bottom of the back face click here then click here and then click here and what you have are the three back faces of the cube. We're already more than half done because the front faces are real easy to create. All you do is uh, draw over the front faces and I'm going to skip ahead on that one. Now because I was drawing at a distance these uh, lines don't exactly hit each other so what I want to use is the uh, snap to tool that horseshoe shaped thing so you can see I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm wondering what horse is going around with only three horseshoes on but uh, I might figure that out someday so let's click here and let's make these lines meet so that once we fill this object in there's not going to be any gaps in the transparency now I'm going to rotate this just a little bit more and this is an artistic call uh, now that I'm happy with that what I'm going to do is um, this is a reference 
Now that I've got the three bank faces, um, I've put options, uh, control, shift, O on my toolbar. And what you want to do is set the nudge to 460 pixels because, because that's narrower than the object that you created. And what we're going to do is bump these uh, three pieces over to the side so we can see both the reference object and the three shapes that it was shown. Again, the three front sides are just going to appear in this video and uh, I think you'll agree that uh, it's going to be pretty easy to trace over them. So what you do is you select all three of the back faces and then you use the right arrow key to nudge the pieces over. Let's try this again. Okay, now that you've got it, the front faces take zero talent to uh, draw and I've already drawn them to save time in this tutorial. So uh, I'm, I've colored them green and they're grouped and as you can see they basically cover the front there's going to be some uh, node tightening to do what i'm going to do and what i want you to do is uh, to ungroup the three and to uh, nudge the top over to the uh, right and with the uh, linear gradient fill uh, i want you to go from that hexadecimal color to the other now open up the color editor and let's move it over and let's take the eyedropper tool and sample a light color for the back face as you can see that was chosen and uh, what we're going to do now is to choose the right back face and we're going to give that a color too let me just select that now with the color editor let's uh, pick a uh, shade of purple and we'll make that fairly light and with the fill tool we're going to create a, uh, a gradient so the uh, end color we can make a little bit darker and the top color is going to be light. Now obviously you can't see through these pieces yet. The top piece, which I've just selected, needs to be semi-transparent. So what we're going to do is take the transparency tool and uh, instead of mix we're going to do a uh, linear mix in uh, bleach mode. And as you can see, the uh, the very back piece there is a little too light because the uh, the top piece is uh, bleaching it too much. So the back piece, I want you to control the uh, the uh, linear handles and make that top color a little bit darker. And uh, right now, you can see that uh, you can see all three sides, which is uh, suggesting already that we've uh, got some decent transparency going. Um, this is a work in progress. You really need to play with the values of the transparency and uh, the uh, colors that you're using that make that transition. Now I'm going to take the uh, front left piece and uh, create a gradient and there's a hexadecimal value that you want to use and the top is white so the bottom is deep purple the color not the group and uh, once we've got that in front there, I'm going to make the uh, outline a little slimmer so it becomes evident what we're doing. Now with the transparency tool, I want you to make a linear transparency. The uh, start color is 100% uh, and the bottom should be zero. And uh, it, that still doesn't look right. That top left piece is going to look better once we change the color of the bottom piece, which has no fill at the moment. So let's give it a solid deep purple at the moment. And with the transparency tool, let's give that a uniform transparency. And as you can see, we're getting there. Now let's take the right front face which is going to affect some of the back pieces and I've made the uh, outline a little thinner and what you want to do is pick a fairly bluish uh, purple to uh, give the cube uh, a little more interesting color uh, and better separation uh, of course uh, the start color is going to be white now with the transparency tool that must be my coffee you're going to want to play with the angle. The angle here I think is pretty good for the gradient. Now what I want you to do uh, with the transparency tool is to uh, drag from bottom to top at about that angle. Let's try that again. What I'm trying to do, what you should be trying to do 
with the transparency tool is to uh, both shade the piece. Now we've got 100% at top. The bottom handle should be 0%. And we're getting pretty close. I'm pulling that piece away to show you what it looks like and uh, also to evaluate it. Now I think that uh, color that we have there is, uh, let's take a look at the bottom color, which is white, and see if with the uh, transparency tool we can choose the stained glass mode and then try to get a uh, color going on there. I think we've succeeded. By the way, you can take a look at this finished file. It's in the zip file that you'll download. Um, I think we're getting pretty close. Let's choose no outline for the sides. And uh, it's looking pretty nice as a uh, semi-transparent cube. The front left, uh, I think that white highlight needs to be uh, lessened. So we did that. And again, I think to uh, finish up this project, what we want to do is to uh, tighten up the uh, corners there. So if we go to wireframe mode and uh, turn that horseshoe snap to feature on, on the info bar, then uh, we're getting closer here. Once you've got all the control points uh, where you want them, I'm going to show you how to add a drop shadow to a semi-transparent object. They don't look the same. Um, in fact, a drop shadow to a uh, semi-transparent cube is the same color as the cube. And there's also a uh, focal point. Um, as you'll notice, semi-transparent objects have kind of a lens, so there will be a lighter shape inside. So make yourself a purple shape, and it can be blobby looking like this. It doesn't have to be perfectly rectangular or even trapezoidal. Now with the uh, transparency tool, do uh, a linear transparency. And with the feathering option, uh, feather the, the daylight side of the thing. Now you'll notice as that contracts the feathering action, so uh, move the shape a little bit more to uh, butt up against the uh, right side. What I'm going to do here now is create that uh, lighter color, and that's the hexadecimal value you want to be using, and as you can see it's lighter. And uh, we're going to feather this up to, uh, I think I remember it was about 50 pixels, and uh, move that over. And that little lens object there, that, that focal point that makes the purple lighter, um, I think is a nice touch. What I'm doing with the shape tool now is I'm um, editing some of the uh, control points there. So uh, just to modify it and perfect it. And I think what we have here now is a finished semi-transparent cube complete with shadow. And I hope to see you next month on... Thank you.